So it's Tuesday, and seeing as how we've run through the player's handbook from Barbarian all the way to Wizard, now we're thinking about what kind of top 10 Tuesday videos we can do. And to finish out all of this, because you guys asked for it, we're going to talk about the Artificer, the new class, the first new class in five years added to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons from Eberron Rising from the Last War. So if you want to see what the top 10 magic items I think of for that class, stay tuned. So let's get some rules out of the way up front. We do this every time, but this one's going to be a little bit different. So, first of all, we're going to ignore anything that's consumable. That means potions, scrolls, and the like. So those, toss those out. We're going to ignore any legendary items and any artifacts, as well as any sentient weapons. Toss those out too. And we're going to ignore the tomes and the uh, any of the manuals that add a plus two to a given stat and then raise that ability score by two, as well as the Ion Stones that do kind of the same thing. Throw those out as well. And lastly, because the Artificer is a class that has the ability to replicate several different magic items, what we're going to do is we're going to ignore any of those items that would be replicatable as an Artificer. Part of that is because you can get yourself access to very simple things like plus one or plus two magic armor very, very early on. Same thing with magic weapons, as well as a lot of the very base level magic items you'd be looking for in any class, like goggles of night or a bag of holding. So we're going to toss all of those out as well. We'll go through that list after the break here, uh, and then, or I'll just put a link in the description, and then we'll see what's left after that. Actually, I just decided to go through them right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll scroll down here real quick and run through these. So Enhanced Arcane Focus is the equivalency of a Wand of the War Mage that starts off as plus one and goes to plus two. So that's gone. Uh, plus one Armor or Shield that then turns into a plus two Armor or Shield. We can toss that out. Same thing with Enhanced Weapon, which is any simple or martial weapon. Those are removed as well. The Homunculus is unique, so we're going to ignore that. We have the Radiant Weapon here, which again is like a plus one magic weapon with a uh, plus one magic weapon that sheds light and has a blinding factor. So there's nothing that really matches up with that. Uh, repeating Shot is going to take any weapon that basically is like a crossbow. So this almost removes the need for the crossbow expert feat. Because it's going to make it a plus one weapon, ignore the loading feature require no ammunition and then this is kind of the main thing here is the replicate magic item so these are the things that we are going to ignore here a lot of these we probably would right we're not going to ignore any of the uh warforged specific ones uh goggles of night are one that comes up common most of these we probably wouldn't look at too much either wand of magic detection or wand of secrets but here we're getting into some of the more real ones the level six or higher boots and cloak of elven kind uh cloak of the manta ray maybe gloves of thievery has a big chance of being on an artificer list because of the, th the tools you have a lantern of revealing is a pretty good one uh, ring of water walking nothing too crazy there moving on to the level 10 and up cloak of protection eyes of the eagle very good for any class uh gauntlets of ogre power could be good as well to boost your strength if you need it um hat of disguise headband of intellect also useful if you want to get that boosted intelligence and you don't have it naturally helm of telepathy has appeared on i think on a couple of my lists um, ring of mind shielding slippers of spider climbing good winged boots you guys know and love to rag on me the fact that i put winged boots on my list so much they can make one so it won't be on this list moving down amulet of health also removed belt of hill giant strength so that's just the one that sets your strength to a 21 that one is out uh boots of speed bracers of defense that's removed cloak of the bat um ring of protection ring of free action those are removed we have a shield that's just going to give you a plus one to knock stuff away. Any armor that provides resistance, resistance armor, that won't be on the list either. Or returning weapon is specific to this class, but an item that you can throw and comes back. So any of the things that I just went over, those are removed from this list. Let's get on to number 10. Last thing, I promise. I also am ignoring the level 15 ability because at level 15, artificers get the ability to attune to and use any magic item and ignore any of the class or level or race requirements for those. We're going to ignore that because one, it happens at level 15 and uh, rarely do you ever get to that point. And two, if we're going to go with that and you can attune to literally anything, then any of the past tap 10 lists that I've done would all be applicable to this. 
uh, and we'd be using most of those items as well. So we're ignoring that we're going to base it just on the base class itself before they hit level 15. Number 10. Number 10 is Eyes of Minute Seeing. This one actually kind of shocked me that this wasn't on the list of ones that they could already create. Uh, but I thought this is a very artificer style item, so I was kind of shocked to not see it there. So that's why it's on the list here. This uncommon uh, non-attunement magic item is found in the basic rules or the DMG. And these crystal lenses fit over the eyes. While wearing them, you can see much better than normal out to a range of one foot. You have advantage on intelligence investigation checks that rely on sight while searching an area or studying an object within that range. You, as an artificer, have access to thieves tools. So in theory, you have the opportunity to disarm or, or search for traps or any of that kind of a thing. You're also someone who's going to more than likely be creating things or possibly studying things in intricate detail to try to replicate them, rework them, understand them more deeply. So being able to truly scrutinize them with the eyes of minute seeing makes a lot of sense. You could, in theory, combine these with the eyes of the eagle, which you can create in and of yourself, and then have really good long distance vision and then really good close-up vision and then like moderate, uh, you know, intermediate di uh, vision. But I don't know, they just feel like an artificer item, so that's why they're on the list. Number nine. Number nine is the Blast Scepter. I've talked about this one in the past, but it's here for a reason. This very rare attunement magic item is found in the Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage Adventure, and it can be used as an arcane focus, and kind of the main things of it is it, while attuned to it, you get resistance to fire and lightning damage, which are two of the most common damage types out there, typically in spell form. And as an action, you can use it to cast a Thunder Wave at fourth level with a set DC of 16 without expending a spell slot. So again, free damage, free AoE damage that's significant at 4th level uh, that you can just do every turn. It still gives you your bonus action to do artificer things as well as reactions, command your servants, or whatever the case may be. Resistance to fire and lightning damage. If you use one of your infusions to create a resistance armor, you could use it to create a different type of armor, and then you'd have resistance to fire, lightning, and that. And remember, again, as you level up as an artificer, you are able to attune to more than three magic items. So a lot of these you may be able to attune to. And if for some reason you happen to be lucky enough to make it all the way to level 20, you'll have a significant boon for every uh, magic item you're attuned to, so you're going to want to fill up as many of those slots as you possibly can. Number eight. Number eight is the Cape of the Montebank, which is, again, another one I feel like I'm a little shocked that they weren't able to create in and of themselves. There's, it's, they're able to build magic items that are significantly stronger, so I thought this could have been on their list. But Dimension Door is also not a spell you can cast inherently, so this one kind of makes sense there. This rare uh, non-attunement magic item is found in the basic rules or the DMG, and basically, while wearing it, you can use an action to cast Dimension Door, and it can't be used again until the next dawn. Dimension Door is an exceptionally useful spell. If you can have, find a way to get access to it, then you definitely should. You will never be sad that you have it prepared. Uh, the fact that you can cast Dimension Door and bring someone with you has a ton of benefits as well, both in and out of combat. And again, since you can't cast it as a base artificer spell, and you can't craft the Cape of the Montebank as one of your items, that's why it's here. Uh, again, this kind of movement options is something you'd be looking for. Number seven. Number seven is a Belt of Dwarven Kind. Again, an item that I'm quite fond of. This rare attunement magic item found in the basic rules or the DMG gives you a bunch of benefits, a plus two bonus to your constitution score, advantage on persuasion checks when dealing with dwarves, and the ability to grow a beard significantly more. Uh, if you have that ability to grow one or to grow it significantly thicker, uh, and if you aren't a dwarf, it gives you the following benefits. Again, these are typically better if you are not a dwarf because it's going to give you advantage on saving throws against poison and resistance to poison damage, dark vision out to a range of 60 feet, and the ability to speak, read, and write dwarvish. So this is going to potentially remove, not entirely, but the option to use Goggles of Night as one of your infusions. Again, sort of shocked that this wasn't one. Maybe the idea of the dwarven kind is why it's not an item you can craft. I don't know. Uh, but if you happen to get the Blast Scepter from a little bit earlier, which will give you resistance to fire and lightning damage, get this belt, which will give you resistance to poison damage, then you could craft, if you wanted, 
using one of your infusions, a resistance armor of another type of damage, be resistant to something else. Or, you know, you could just do the plus two magic armor that you could craft. But anyway, this will help keep you uh, sustainable and in the fight. It gives you decent resistances. It has some flavor stuff through the charisma checks, advantage on charisma checks versus dwarves. Maybe a little bit redundant. You could use the amulet of life that you can craft to give yourself a 19, uh, you know, constitution. But if you already have, say, an 18 or 16, this will get you the same equivalent of an amulet of life or higher if you have an 18 and then a bunch of other benefits as well. Number six. Number six is the Helm of Teleportation. And the reason why this is on here is it's kind of tricky to figure out exactly what role an Artificer will play in your party or in combat or in the game in general. They're designed in such a way that each one is pretty unique. They have a lot of good utility options. They have healing. Some of them have significant damage. Some of them have significantly better healing. But I'd say one way you will more than likely be described in the party as a utility person. You can do a lot of things and cover a lot of different bases to fill a gap in a party where one is needed or to just aid in general. So the Helm of Teleportation, an attunement rare magic item found in the basic rules or the DMG, has three charges and while wearing it you can use an action to expend one charge to cast a teleport from it. It regains 1d3 daily charges at, uh, at dawn. But you will never get, teleport's a 7th level spell? Yeah, a 7th level spell. As an artificer, your spells top out at 5th level. Teleportation is a very useful option for anybody to have access to as a utility uh, kind of role in the party and a utility class. Having access to teleport won't be bad. And again, you have typically more attunement slots than your average other party person. So this is something that you could make a lot of use of because it's going to give you access to a spell you'll never be able to get. Uh, you can use it up to three times, you can help support the party, and as you get later on in levels, you'll still have your same three attunement slots while still being attuned to this. Number five. Number five may just be one of those items that in future videos I should just outlaw entirely, and that's the Cloak of Displacement. This rare attunement magic item found in the basic rules is basically an item that will be useful to everyone all the time, I'd say, unless you really do the best at staying completely at a distance and never engage in the chance of anyone being able to hit you with any kind of attack roll. But while you wear it, it projects an illusion of you right next to you uh, and causes any creature, um, let's see, causing any creature to have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. If you take damage, the property ceases until the start of your next turn, and it doesn't work if you're incapacitated, restrained, or otherwise unable to move. Again, it's an attack roll, so this works on ranged attacks, spell attacks, and melee attacks, and melee spell attacks. So they all have a chance to miss. Again, if you're hit with something like an AoE, that's you taking damage, so the ability ceases. Uh, I guess, you know, maybe if you happen to stay outside of everyone's long range for attacks, and you can still attack from that distance then I guess this that's the case where this wouldn't be a useful item. But anybody, again, if you're in combat, whether it be at a range or in the thick of things, people having advan disadvantage on attack rolls against you is huge. This will work just as well for your low-level grunt goblins and kobolds as it will against your high-level dragons, because disadvantage just increases the chance that even though they may be able to hit you if they roll a 2 or higher, disadvantage increases the chance that they roll a natural 1 and miss you completely. Number four. Number four is the Robe of Stars. This one uh, I struggled with putting on this list because in my mind, I just don't think of artificers as robe wearers because they do have access to armor, but there's no reason they couldn't wear robes. And if you're thinking about giving them a Wand of Magic Missile, why not give them the Mac Daddy of Wands of Magic Missiles in the Robe of Stars which is a very rare attunement magic item found in the basic rules or the DMG that will give them magic missile, but several other benefits. First of all, it's going to give you a plus one bonus to saving throws while you wear it. And it has six stars, the six little red dots you can see there. Each one can be plucked off and used as an action, and that casts magic missile at fifth level. So it's going to be a significantly more powerful magic missile. And daily at dusk, 1d6 remove stars or reappear on the road. So you're going to be able to cast more magic missiles and have a higher level, or I guess more higher level magic missiles than you would be able to with a wand, 
You get the plus one bonus to saving throws, and in addition, while you wear the robe, you can use an action to enter the astral plane along with everything you're wearing and carrying. You remain there until you use an action to return to the plane you were on. You reappear in the last space you occupied, which is a good way to get out of damage. If uh, someone's attacking you and you need to make a quick getaway or you think you're about to be seen, uh, perhaps if you're sneaking around, this could be a way to kind of oh shit button out of there. Uh, again, who knows what's going to happen when you reappear, but, you know, that's an option that you have on top of all the other benefits. Number three. Number three is the Rod of Absorption. This very rare attunement magic item is found in the Basic Rules or the DMG. And I just recently discovered this and sort of really read through it, which is why it appeared on the wizard list and why it's here again. While holding this rod, you can use your reaction to absorb a spell that it's targeting only you and not, with, and not you with an area of effect. The absorbed spell's energy is canceled. It's, uh, the spell's energy itself is stored within the rod. Uh, and then basically you can use those spell energy that, that stored within the rod to cast spells back out of it. It can store up to 50 levels over the course of its existence. Once it's absorbed 50 levels of energy, it can't absorb any more. If you're targeted with a spell that would push it past 50, like let's say you have 45 charges and someone casts an 8th level spell, that wouldn't work. Uh, when you become attuned to the rod, you know how many charges are left and how much it has absorbed. And if you're a spellcaster holding it, you can convert energy stored in it into spell slots. So basically, it only works up to a maximum of 5th level spells, which is great because you can never cast higher than 5th level spells, so you're going to get the full use out of that. Um, and basically, yeah, you can cast a spell. You can create a spell slot. Uh, spell slots only of a level equal to or lower than the spell slots that you can cast, uh, or of your own spell slots, rather, up to 5th level. You can use stored spells in place of your own slots, but they otherwise cast as normal. So whatever components and things that need to happen, those happens as normal. For example, you can use three levels stored in the rod as a third level spell. And then it has like a newly rod has so much whatsoever, blah, blah, blah. So not only, uh, again, as I talked about in the wizard one, which I went through pretty extensively, you could cast your own spells at the end of the day into this rod to boost up its power. So you have those kind of spell battery to draw from if you want. Or the way I see it being more useful is to essentially be a counter spell where if someone casts a spell targeting only you, that's the problem, right? It's only targeting you, not an AoE that hits only you or an AoE that hit you and other people. If it's a singular spell aimed right at you, you can use the rod to absorb that, nullify that spell completely, and gain yourself some spell charges in the rod that you can use to fuel your own magic. As an artificer, you do not get access to the counter spell spell um through subclasses or through the base uh class so having this works essentially as a counter spell for you um and a way to also counter a counter spell potentially right you can absorb if someone's trying to counter you counter spell targets you specifically so you can use the rod to absorb that or some other really nasty damaging spell or mind control spell or whatever this mitigates that and gives you a benefit from it as well Number two. Number two is the Stone of Good Luck. As an artificer, you're going to get tool expertise later on, so the ability to bump up all of your uh, proficiency or your get double your proficiency bonus in any tool that you gain access to via the class. So your tool proficiency numbers are going to be pretty crazy. Uh, so anything that's going to, similar to a rogue or a bard, the Stone of Good Luck is going to increase your ability checks by one and your saving throws by one. So the bonus to your saving throws is huge. Again, if you happen to make it to level 20, you could possibly be getting a flat plus six bonus to your saving throws if you have six magic items you're attuned to. This will add one more to that, so it's going to be pretty damn hard for you to fail saving throws towards the end of the game. But anyway, a plus one to saving throws is useful throughout. And a plus one to ability checks is really useful, so that's going to give you a bonus to not only initiative, but any other ability checks that you make, which if it's a skill-based or a tool-based ability check, you're going to have expertise in that at level six beyond. So this is really just going to boost that up and make you better at what you do already. Again, if you had the eyes of minute seeing from earlier on, your up-close investigation checks that are going to be an advantage will now also be at a plus one. It's really useful for anyone, but again, if you have those access to expertise, it just goes that little bit further. Number one. And lastly, number one, 
It's the Ring of Spell Story. Again, this may be another one of those items that I would just remove going forward from the top 10 lists because it's something that's useful for every class. But again, if you're a spellcaster, it goes even further because it has a ton of uses. This attunement magic, uh, rare attunement magic item is found in the basic rules and the DMG. And it can store up to five levels worth of spells in it. Any creature can cast a spell of first through fifth level into the ring, and it is then the spell isn't cast, it's stored in the ring, and then you can use whatever is associated with it to cast that spell from it. If it's an action, you can cast it as an action, or bonus action as a bonus action. You get the point. Uh, it uses the slot level spell save DC and spell attack bonus of whoever the original caster was casting things into the ring. So if it's you, it's going to use your intelligence modifier. If it's the sorcerer, it's going to use their charisma, whatever the case is. Um, and that's pretty much how it works. The benefit of it as an artificer is you have a ton of very useful utility spells. Your subclasses give you a bunch of awesome spells. You could put healing spells in here. You could say put, I don't know, something that you ritual cast, right? You have ritual casting. Maybe you put identify in your ring. So you can cast identify as an action. I think identify is an action spell, but I could be wrong. Rather than ritual casting it, you know, something like that, or detect magic, um, or again, the ever popular have somebody else who's also a spellcaster cast the spell into the ring for you so you can gain access to spells you wouldn't normally have. Again, as an artificer, you're pretty, you, you know, you have a lot of utility, right? You have damage, you have healing. So, you know, maybe there's some specific spell, something you want to have someone put in it so you can cast it on your, one of your companions or your turret or your iron defender or whatever the case may be. It uh, just has a lot of uses. Certain subclasses as Artificer get shield. You could cast shield into your ring five times to potentially have five free shields or absorb elements or whatever you need or just more cure wounds. Um, or, you know, when you get higher, put a big gun, put a fifth level spell in there so you have an extra fifth level spell slot. Uh, again, a lot of options. It's useful for basically everybody, but spellcasters get a little bit of a leg up on having this because they can put their own spells in it if they need to. And that is pretty much it, everyone. That is it for the Artificer Top 10 Magic Items for the brand new class added in Eberron Rising from the Last War. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it was a little tricky, again, to try to build around what an Artificer in and of itself can build, which is a lot of the common items that get suggested a lot or that I put on my lists pretty often. And again, if we tap into the level 15 ability where they can get anybody's magic items, you'd see things like the Candle of Invocation, you'd see things like the Necklace of Prayer Beads, other items that are going to give you a lot of good use, you'd have those. And again, I kind of ignored, like I typically do the subclasses, right? The Battlesmith is going to get martial weapons, which would add a whole other level of items, you know, maybe like a Flame Tongue or a Frost Brand or things like that could get added in. But it was tricky, but I think I did pretty well overall again. Once you start doing these lists extensively and a lot, you're going to start to see a lot of items pop up consistently on all of them just because of the way these things kind of work out. There's a lot, only so many magic items, and a lot of them are useful for every class. So thank you guys again for watching. If you have not had a chance to subscribe to the channel, this is your opportunity to do so. Uh, and if you did like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and I guess ring the notification bell if you want. Uh, to stay up to date on things. Uh, I will have our 10K video, uh, 10K subscriber giveaway video coming out soon. Things have been really crazy. If you follow my social media, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I wanted to get this filmed and in the can and hopefully ready to release for Tuesday so we don't fall behind. Um, things are just going to be crazy for me for this week uh, with everything that's going on as well as next week's the holiday. So it's just it's just been a crazy time. Um, the plan is next Tuesday, which will be Christmas Eve, I believe. The top 10 video then should be, um, top 10, uh, top 10 magic items for the Matt Mercer's Blood Hunter class. You guys had asked for that, so I will add that to my list. It's another technical brand new class, so, uh, it's more popular than a lot of people know it, and a lot of people almost consider it to be canon, even though it isn't. Uh, so I'll add that to the list as well. Um, I typically stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I know I say that. There's a link to the Twitch in the uh, the description below, but things have been really crazy, again, as I've stated lately with the holidays. Uh, so we're going to be taking a hiatus from a couple of the different streams, but I will be making a video as we get closer to the end of the year and the start of the new year, uh, basically going over all the programming for 2020. We're going to have a bunch of new shows coming out in places of some other time slots, some new campaigns 
um, some more long running content that'll get published on Nerd Immersion Plays, which there's also a link in the description to that. If you want to check out our gameplay, I've been trying to get all the backlog gameplay up there that stuff it shows you may have seen stop being uploaded to this channel are being uploaded there. And that was in an effort to split the difference between those of you who like these kind of videos and my thoughts and reviews and fixing series and that kind of stuff on this channel and the longer three hour plus gameplay videos on a separate channel for those people who want to see that. So uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.